Good morning, folks. We had a snap happy star the last day. This filament snapped, but we can also be relatively sure that most of it fell back down to the sun instead of ejected. A CME was produced from the non-Earth directed filament snap earlier this morning. When the coronagraph images update, we'll see the ejecta, but until then, it's pretty enough of a sight here. We've got more plasma filaments incoming on the south, sparse, and a much more compact and vertically extended incoming filament on the north. We will come to spaceweathernews.com as usual, but today we can just use the 211 angstrom view because the coronal holes are taking all the top space weather watches. This is partially because solar flaring has remained very low, which itself is due to the Earth-facing quiet effect shutting down all umbral interactions that would otherwise cause flaring. Even the mega CME maker from a week ago has learned his place on the Earth-facing side of our star. The bigger reason coronal holes are the story is in the solar wind. The streams from exiting coronal holes are impacting and causing intense solar wind readings. Geomagnetic storm activity has been low, but individual indices like the K and Q are and have been showing more significant disruption than the KP index. On our solar wind speed charts, we can see the low solar wind line marking the separation of solar sectors, seen as the blue arching field separating opposite polarity coronal holes. Green positive exiting, red negative will begin facing Earth tonight and jack up the quake watch. Folks, we also have some very cool news to report today. We now think we know what the Ceres lights are made of. Salts and water dominate that part of the rocky surface, which gives it amazing reflectivity, but it also produces a light mist under the influence of sunlight that can cause the bright effects to linger almost beyond the boundary of sunlight. There's also news out of an L-dwarf star with a storm near the North Pole, a superstorm. Apparently it has been raging on this cold-type star for more than two years. Let's come back to that in a moment. While parts of the Pacific coastline take storm after storm, brutally affecting the northwest states and British Columbia area, I do hope the south central states are preparing for the thunderstorms tonight and tornadoes tomorrow. Europe also doing a bit of anticipating as another strong storm system is offshore and heading for flood-struck England. We expect this to dance in over the coming day and a half and hopefully the waters recede as much as possible by then. The anticipatory trifecta completes down under with a powerful convergence between nations, heading to New Zealand, with the weaker edges of it likely not feeling too weak for those in northeastern Australia dealing with the part of the convergence that swung left to them. So, storms on stars? Cold stars? Yes, these things exist, and they actually have a nice and very necessary place in the Star Water series. Learn more about them and more in the most watched video series we have at Suspicious Observers, outside of these morning news, of course. Folks, the first shipment of books has arrived to me, so if you got it before December 4th, I have your book and it will be on its way to you in the next coming days. The highest quality paper was a very good call given the hundreds of HD quality images in there. There's also a glossary of terms we use, resource lists, and even a simple one-page prepping checklist for the day we hope never arrives. We are 50 days from part two of observing the frontier. There won't be many places in the United States worth going outside at the end of January, but Phoenix is one of them. Details found at the link below or at the links found at suspiciousobservers.org. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 5.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Hey.